Hello there, my friends. So nice of you to tune in again. I hope you have a great Christmas season. As you see behind me, my little Christmas tree. Very, very nice. We don't put up a big Christmas tree anymore because... Um, you know, we don't have any, the grandchildren are growing up and they're not really coming anymore. And I do like Christmas, so my favorite, my favorite season. Well, and we have Amnan, our producer, who's in the background and who makes all of this happen. So say hello, Amnan. Hello, Amnon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Good afternoon, everybody. On the same day, <laughs> so we can all celebrate together. Yep. And, uh, and I just wanted to mention to the people that are already online watching, if yep. you want to uh, communicate with Gisela during the show, you need to log in yep. to the chat. Or you can call 919-518-9773. Or you can com connect to us using voice only through Computers 2K Voice <laughs> on Skype. Yeah, really easy. Ask me questions, please, please, please. Because you know what? That makes the show more interesting. We always have a little, I always have a little format. I always have prepared a few cases for you, uh, a few things of what, how, how you can weather, um, you know, this season uh, better. But um, your questions really make it more interesting for everybody. You know, it's not just uh, that you get uh, the question answered, but please don't be shy. I mean, um, we are not collecting your email addresses. We are not collecting anything. And there's no charge for it. Um, it's a rare opportunity to really talk to a home. Because most of the time I charge for this. You know, I charge um, my clients when they come to see me. I charge them a fee. And even if they just wanted to talk to me about something. Um, because my time is valuable, and um, this is your life. This, this is your Sunday uh, for your benefit. So this is your livelihood. This is your livelihood. Yeah, it is. That's what I do. Yeah. I am a homeopathist, and uh, I've studied many years for it. And I, uh, I am most of the time I'm very successful with it. Most of my clients get better one of the one of the problems i just um, i apologize i'm just turning off my phone here so it doesn't ring i hadn't done that before because um i was on a um call with turkey somebody who is going away uh on a long plane ride and has a problem with um blood clots you know, thrombosis in the in the legs, sitting many hours in a plane. And um, I was counseling him uh, what uh, he can use and what he can um, take so that uh, this will be alleviated, that he will not have that. And the remedy for that is <clears throat> if you're planning on taking uh, a long plane ride or even a long car ride, um, take Arnica 6C. Arnica 6C um, is really a, it thins the blood a little bit. If you really have a major problem, also chew, chew, not take, but chew one aspirin, okay? Because that thins the blood and it alleviates that problem that there may be a blood clot. If you, but as you know, in homeopathy, every case is different. Just because Arnica C was for this person right, it may not be the right one for you. So always talk, either call me or go to another homeopathist, talk it over, 
uh, with uh, the opinions are very, very different. Most of the time for thrombosis like this, the doctors give warfarin, you know, a blood thinner. Well, that also is rat poison. So um, it's, it's up to you which you find more amenable and which you find will be probably without any side effects. And Arnica 6C is definitely without any side effects. Warfarin, if you look it up, it's W-A-R-F-A-R-I-N. If you look it up online, you will be aghast. Okay? Uh, but they still give it because that's what they have. And I am not knocking doctors or knocking the pharmaceuticals. I just am trying to point you in a different way and educate you in a different way also. Now, as always, when we start out, we first have a little political rant because I've got to get that off my chest. And then we will talk about uh, the flu season, to vaccinate or not. That is the question. How you can reverse mild diabetes. Uh, then the regulations on CBD oil and cannabis. And then we'll have, we'll talk just briefly about what it is, what Christmas really is, and what really Hanukkah, what the season really mid, means. So let's jump right into it. Um, I had a friend ask me this week uh, to research maybe some um, jobs in a hospital or in a as a substitute teacher or, you know, just something part-time because that person needs to make a little extra money. And I said, I'd be glad to. It's a good friend. You know, she doesn't, she has a computer, but the computer is very old and, you know, and she's not very well versed on how to, I said, you know what, it takes me a few minutes and then we have the results and I can tell you of where to go. Well, I did. I, I mean, really, I was, I was so amazed that I said, I've got to tell this to the people. Here's what happens. If you want to be a substitute teacher, in an, now, this, mind you, this person wanted to be in an elementary school, where, you know, from uh, first grade to fourth grade or something like that. And a substitute teacher is really only there to um, babysit the kids, you know, because the regular teacher uh, comes back, hopefully, and substitute teachers are never used for very long for a class. Uh, most of the time, then the teacher gets exchanged, and then they have a regular teacher again. But substitute teachers go in for a day, maybe two days, and that's it. Well, for a substitute teacher in Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, you have to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree. You have to have a examination. You have to take a course in this the teaching thing. I, I forgot the acronym yet now. And that costs money. And then guess what? They pay you around $7 an hour. Did you get that? Seven dollars an hour. That's not even that. <laughs> that's not even a minimum wage. Seven twenty-five is minimum wage. Right. Right. They from eight o'clock to four o'clock uh, in the afternoon. They pay you sixty-nine dollars. So that's not even seven dollars. That's that's yeah. That's around seven dollars. So uh, then I told her that, and so she said, well, I can't, I can't do that because then it pays me to stay home. <laughs> I get food stamps if I don't work. So then she said, well, what, what about like in a hospital, uh, like um, 
you know, in, in the cafeteria or something like that. So I searched that. And here's what I found. This is how insane our world is. For a, a dietitian tech, that's what they're called. A dietitian. Now, this person, what that person does is it works in the dishwashing area. It works in the uh, cafeteria or in the kitchen, putting the food on the plate, putting the, the uh, 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 plate onto the cart, wheeling it to the uh, patients and setting the plate onto the patient's tray. That is the job description. That job description is the requirements of a high school degree or a bachelor's degree, and they pay $7 an hour. I mean, are we living in an insane world? Is the whole world gone insane? It is just ridiculous. No wonder we have so many people on public assistance. They can't find a decent job that pays anything. You might as well go uh, to Walmart, and there at least you get $9 an hour. Or, you well, if you work at McDonald's, you get between 8 and $9 an hour. Sometimes in some areas, in some metropolitan areas, you get $10 an hour. And... I am just really, I'm just really incensed about that. Whatever happened to trade schools? Whatever happened to to the notion of let's educate people? Do we all have to have a bachelor? A bachelor degree is now the equivalent of a glorified high school degree. I mean, it's just really. Um, uh, tell me what you think. I'll tell. tell I'll you tell you what I think. What? Yeah, please. You can't. You can't blame the trade schools. The no. only ones you can blame is the people, and and here it the is. Colleges. And not 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 it. no. You can't. You can't blame the colleges either. Why not? Because it's not their fault that people are not going for trade training. They are not. The, the, the trade schools of, of the type that I'm talking about are more expensive than colleges. No, I mean, you can go to community uh, college. That, if you that, live in an area where they have one, yeah. Yeah, and, and then that's where you le learn a trade. But people yeah. don't want to do quote-unquote trades. They would rather do something like going and working in a school for six, seven hours and do nothing but, like you said, babysit and being yeah. inside and not stressed and all that. And they want jobs like that. Now, these are the people that you can blame because it used to be that you well, couldn't live off of what you do like this. No. Today, you're right. It's harder to live like this. You can't. You can't, really. So you can't. people you cannot so, live up $7 an hour. Uh, where, where I would like to know where you're going to live. More and more people are now living in vans. They live in vans. They live in RVs. They travel around. I just read a story of a lawyer living in a van. A lawyer. Yeah. And he is very happy about that. He has a very, very nice, nice little van. He saves a ton of money yep. on rent. He ta saves a ton of money on not having uh, public um, that utilities. And he's very happy. He's single. Let me tell you, if I would, if I would not have my husband and all my menagerie here, that's what I would be doing. I would be in my van. I would be traveling around. I probably would still be doing the show uh, <laughs> just because for kicks. Because I can do that on the wireless. So there you go. Because yeah, it's but all, we are all connected. I mean, there, so, there, yes. there were reports that were saying, don't send your kids to college to become programmers or become 
doctors or any of these uh, trades, send them to a trade school because yeah. in 10, 20 years, plumbers, uh, carpenters, whatever, these, these trades are going to make a whole lot more money oh, yeah. than the others. Oh, yeah. But no. Because we I don't mean, have any. Right, but everybody any, wants to send. But everybody wants to send. Already in this area here, if I wanted to have a handyman, yeah, I mean I have to search, far, search far and high, and you know to find somebody yeah. who can fix a faucet, fix it correctly. Yeah, you know. But that's the yeah. problem: is that parents want to send their kids to schools where they become a doctor, a lawyer, you know. I mean, you know, it's it's not going. It, it, there, there's too many of them. Yeah. Well, you know, I I just thought I had to get that off my chest. Do we have anybody out there who has a comment on that? Come on, folks. Tell me I'm off the wall. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm, I'm right. Tell tell me something. Tell me. I want to know your opinion. Do you have a have a child that? that thinks it has to incur death, uh, debt, debt, not death, debt, uh, to, uh, I mean, we have a son who has a bachelor's degree, he works as a bartender. Yeah. Uh, well, he makes a lot more money as a bartender right. than if he would be working, uh, you know, he has a degree in drama. Well, lots of good did that to him. You know, that and the token on the New York subway gets them to Brooklyn <laughs> or Queens, you know? I mean, <laughs> it's really, uh, it was like almost $50,000 out of the window. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, it just really, it, it irks me. It just really irks me. It upsets me. And we have so many seniors, so many seniors that, uh, well, maybe they had a high school degree somewhere, but, you know, they're now in their 70s, their high school doesn't even exist anymore. They, you know, they, so why not use the life experience of these people and say, okay, what did you do? What did you work as? Let's ha take your life experience. Now, some companies do that, and some places do that, but not really not enough. And most of these seniors, not only do they often need the money, but they also live longer and happier and healthier if they have something productive to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's really one of the reasons. I mean, I'm a senior. I... I need to have something productive to do. If I don't do that, then I I get very I get very antsy. You know, I almost get um, you know. Do you have a, a problem with the internet? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, because right now I had a hear a notice that there was a problem no okay. it's, it's fine all right let's go so no questions no comments no nothing no nothing not yet no nothing all right well guys you know i i think maybe i have to threaten you again like the last time and say well <gasps> if i don't get any comments if i don't get any participation i'm gonna stop this show well <gasps> you know no i hate, I hate to threaten people but i kind of really like to get some participation maybe everybody has a flu <laughs> because let me tell you right now in the northeast flu season is starting now one of the things is always to vaccinate or not that is the question well i have said it before and i'm going to say it again to vaccinate against the flu is really futile because the flu strains are as varied as a rainbow. 
and they are they are so many bacteria out there that can give you flu like symptoms where you don't actually have the flu but you have just a cold but the symptoms are like a flu with body aches you know the difference right guys right the flu is you have the body aches you have the chills you have the fever you generally feel feel ill with the cold it's usually uh, just upper you know you may have some cough uh it starts out with stuffy nose watery eyes a little bit of a headache then uh, it might get into the tonsils you might get a little stitching in your ears you might have an earache uh still not pleasant you know even even the uh, uh, ordinary cold can make you feel very ill but it's not the flu and but there's so many different strains of the flu and bacteria that to vaccinate against that in my opinion is really useless uh raza do something that i do and that is i make a turmeric paste you see this jar this is turmeric paste ginger and garlic and see the paste is really thick okay now you can put this on anything you can eat it like this taste very very good you can flavor it with maybe a little bit sweetness if you like i don't i like it like this and then what i do is i incorporate a little coconut butter into it to make it smooth but you have to cook the paste and here's what you do you take about a cup of water put it into a small pan heat the water up to just before boiling not that it's really boiling but just before then you take turmeric powder you can buy it in big jars you take turmeric powder about a half a cup you start with that and you start incorporating that in there and keep adding turmeric powder until it thickens to make a paste once you have done that you take it off the flame leave it in the pot keep stirring it so there are no clumps in there now you incorporate ginger fresh ginger and you rasp the ginger into it don't don't chop it rasp it okay uh you can also buy ginger and garlic paste in the in chinese grocery stores they have the ginger and garlic paste in a jar you can buy that too or you can make fresh your own you uh, rasp it the same thing with garlic a minimum of four garlic cloves and a minimum of one large ginger root okay a large one you don't have to peel it you can just rasp it right in there now you stir it again and now you take some coconut butter butter and incorporate that in that hot paste if the paste is still a little thinner that it it has to be stiff like this right so that it cannot it doesn't see it's it's stiff but creamy if if you have uh uh that it, it has not yet um been stiff like that you can put it back on the flame on a very low flame keep stirring it you don't want to ever burn it now what is a fabulous fabulous drink in the evening um you can take almond milk whole butter whole butter not light skim milk or any of that because that's useless to drink anyway all you get is the lactate uh you don't want ever want to do that if you want to drink milk drink whole milk you can use goat's milk you can use coconut milk you can use almond milk warm it in the microwave for a minute or two just so that it's pleasantly warm 
take a teaspoon of this paste, stir it into it, and drink it just before you go to bed. You will sleep like a baby. And all of your troubles with maybe stuffy nose or, or any of the other malaise or maybe onset of cold or whatever will go away. Now, what you can also do, put in here, you can incorporate all kinds of things in here. They make a um, vegetable powder type of thing. Um, it's called mega something or other. Uh, some of you probably will know it. You can incorporate that into the mixture. And you can smear it on your steak. When you broil it, you can smear it on. I'm going to make cod tonight, and I'm going to use that turmeric paste. I'm going to fry the cod underneath, then I'm going to smear turmeric paste up on top and just sit it under the broiler for just a second or two to just go into it. And um, that I know that's going to be super delicious. Um, turmeric is an anti-inflammatory, works against cancer, works against um, any inflammation. And by the way, this paste, if you have any inflammation, listen up, acne people, boils on the skin right around here, because in the winter time, often we they get that more, okay? Just smear some of that on there. Maybe put a cloth over it. You don't want to have it in the pillowcase. The next morning, it's pretty much so gone. I had a, um, our son had, was in Bali, and he got a knee, he scraped his knee on a coral while he was in the ocean. And some of these bacteria got into his system, and he had a tremendous infection. I mean, it was huge. And he called me up, and he said, what can I do? And I said, well, they have turmeric down there. So you make a turmeric paste, put it on there, wash it off the next day, reapply it, and do it as long as you have the, have the infection. Took him three days the infection was gone. So turmeric is a wondrous, wondrous um, uh, root. It's not a vegetable, it's a root. And you can buy it now also fresh in the, in the uh, you know, like whole foods and so on. They sell the turmeric uh, root. But for this, you want to use powder. And the powder is cheap. So it's a cheap, wonderful way of helping yourself through the flu season. Now, if you have already the flu, if you have already tonsillitis, if you have already the earache, here are some of the remedies that you should go look at. One is belladonna. Belladonna, if you have the chills, if you have fever, if you really feel, feel bad, the other one is if you have, for instance, a sore throat and it really is sort of like pins and needles and when you open your mouth and you look in the mirror, you can see if the throat is really red. If the throat is really red and it feels swollen, you take Apis, Apis, A-P-I-S. And if you are... If you do have the flu, you all over, you feel like a bus hit you. You know, the kind of the flu, you're depressed, your whole body aches, you're, you're upset, you really, it's sort of like, leave me alone, I just want to die in my bed here. Well, if you have that, then you take Gelsium. Gelsium. Gelsium will help. Uh, those cases. And if you want to have something prophylactic for the season that you don't even want to get it, right? That's the best part. You don't want to get it. Is then you take 
osocelium. And I have uh, said that before. Osocelium, you can buy it at Whole Foods and health food store. And some of the drugstores carry it now. Osocelium. Is it gel? Works really it well. And you can take it. And you can take it uh, really prophylactically. Yes. Is it gel gelsium or is it gelsimium? Gelsinium. Okay. Yes. My okay. pronunciation. Thank you for for catching that, Amnon, because you know I'm not an American. I'm German. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we have we have, and, and, and I sometimes don't speak so good. <laughs> and we have a question. Yes. From Jeff, he's saying, any remedy for headache instead of OTC, oh, over-the-counter pills? Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. But see, here with the headaches is one of, one of the things. Headaches come in every flavor and every variety. So uh, you need to tell me a little more about the headache so that I can help you, okay? Where is it? In the front, in the back, on the side? Is it a pressure headache? Is it a stitching headache? Just give me a little synapse. Uh, well, I'll go on, and you can just write it. I'm here for a little while longer, so we have time. And if you want a more detailed uh, answer, just email me. I will email you back with, with a remedy that uh, might be helping you. Now, one of the uh, remedies that will help be helping you is um, CBD oil. We have, said, we have talked about that many times before. CBD oil will help with headaches and pain in general. In Pennsylvania, anybody listening here in Pennsylvania? Yes, no? Yes. I don't see any. No, nobody but, in Pennsylvania. But, but well, I, I see a couple of things. First of all, uh, Kathy is saying, is it os oscillium for prevention? For flu. Flu yeah. prevention. So it is. Os oscillium. Yeah. Oscillium. Okay. Oscillium. It's and, two C's in there. Ossicillium. Okay. And, yeah. and it's Jeff a combination remedy that were, that you can take on the very onset. Like, for instance, uh, you wake up. Usually it's when you wake up or you go to bed. You know, you, you've been all day. You've been feeling kind of off. You come home. You sit down, and all of a sudden it hits you. You get the chills. You feel general malaise. You don't even want to have dinner. You just want to go to bed. That's the time you take the oscillium. Bang, the next morning you feel better. And Jeff okay. is saying that it's occasional headache in the lower back. Lower back of the head, I guess. Lower back of that. Now, that may have to do with your blood pressure. So I would look into your blood pressure, okay? Lower, lower uh, headache, lower back is often an indication either of too high blood pressure or you have a neck injury that needs to be addressed in a different way. So um, if it is high blood pressure, uh, usually, if you chew one aspirin, the headache should be should be going away. I think this is Stuart. what I think this is what he's asking. He was asking originally, any remedy for headache instead of over the counter pills, and he says it's yeah. occasional. He says it's occasional. Right, right. Okay. So often it is often it is high blood pressure. Um, then you would have to you would have to address that. Now, one of the if it is occasional and you just have that little bit of you can take aconite, aconite, okay, A C O 
N I T E. Aconite. I'll put it in there. Right. And uh, I would take it in a 30C. Just take a dose, see if that works. Sometimes that takes care of it. But headaches is something that you don't want to just, um, you know, say, okay, take this remedy. And the now homeopathy really doesn't work that way, you know. Um, it has to be a little bit more specific. But aconite is one of those remedies that works for a quick onset. It's here today, gone tomorrow type of thing. Uh, and you just want to have have a relief right then and there. Uh, aconite works well for that. Mm. I hope that answered your question. Um, it's always a little difficult for me to, when I know there, is, there may be the underlying cause, may be high blood pressure. Um, I don't want to steer you into a way of saying, well, you know, if you take aconite, uh, all your troubles are going to be over. Well, you know what? You do want to understand what the underlying cause of the, of the malaise is, right. of the problem is. Once we know that, then you can address the because I've said it so many times before. Homeopathy does not treat the symptom uh, uh, symptoms like we like um, pharmaceuticals. You know, they just treat the symptoms. And okay, you have a headache. Take this headache on. Well, inside you're still dying. You know, headache. Is maybe gone. Yeah. That's just a symptom of an underlying cause. Right. So what you want to do is you want to find someone like me, who has been trained in homeopathy, and say, "Listen, this is what I have, and I always have it on the third of the month." Well, what do you do on the third of the month? I pay my bills. Oh, okay. Is that stressful? Yes. Well, your your blood pressure very likely may go up because you have more stress. You get my point? That I'm not saying that this in your case, Jeff, but the point is we want to treat and we want to help the underlying cause. Homeopathy is is for the most part not just a quick fix. Okay? It sometimes takes a couple of weeks or months for the remedy to really um, nudge the body to help itself. Because in reality, you are not, the remedy does not help your body. The remedy only, only helps the body to fight your own problem. And since we are all designed to help ourselves, our bodies are so miraculous that we can heal ourselves. Now, in some cases, it doesn't. You know, if you have a bad ticker, well, you know, you do need medical intervention. If you uh, cut off uh, or you injure your arm so badly, that you have to have it sewn back on, well, then you need medical. You, if you have cancer, um, you may want to have the opinion of a medical practitioner. But for the most part, for most of our cases, um, we might, I would always go to the homeopathist first and somebody who is like me uh, who's very conscientious, will say, you know what, why don't you go and have a blood panel done, have a urine test done, bring that to me, we'll discuss it, we'll see of where you are at, I'll see of how I can help you. And I will not mess with, if I see there is renal insufficiency uh, on a large scale, I may give you a remedy, but I will also tell you to go to a uh, urologist and have that taken care of. So 
we have to keep it in content, okay? Uh, it is not, uh, I, I, for myself, I will not go other than if my head is already uh, down and I have it under my arm and I just sort of like, I'm half dead, I will go to the doctor. But that's just me because I know how I can help myself and I know what it can do. And here is, here is the thing that I do want to say about this. Homeopathy has been been made out as being just a placebo and that it's mind over matter. No, not so, not so. Homeopathy is really an energy medicine. It has the energy of the remedy. Like, for instance, I can make out of this, out of this turmeric paste, I can make a homeopathic uh, medicine which is very, very, probably more powerful than me eating this glass full. I'm not going to do that because I don't need that, but that's what, what we do. We, it's minute, minute ingredients and sometimes just the energy of the essence that we want to, we want to um, uh, have in the medicine, like for instance with aconite. Aconite is a plant, a plant that increases the heart rate, that increases, if you would eat that plant or if you would eat a few leaves of the plant, you very likely would get an increase in, in uh, blood surging. Your blood uh, gets much higher. And for many illnesses, especially very fast illnesses or symptoms like a headache that comes on very fast, that is just the right thing because you just want the blood to surge and then it comes down and it takes down with it any kind of um, imbalance that there was. And so you want to have you want to have something that is very gentle in its way. And that is what homeopathy is. It's an energy medicine. And it does is not a mind over matter because I give it to all my pets and they all get better and they don't know what I'm giving them. They, they don't have, they don't have this thing of, well, you know, she's giving me this, this remedy. So now I'm going to get better. They don't have that thought. And you they know get what, better and, and you know the what, remedy helps them to get better. Yes. And you know what, and what if it is mind over matter? Uh, which is just as good. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Yes. Uh, it's just really that we need to we need to have that um, separated. And, and here and, is where, especially and, with with headaches and pain, mm -hmm. so many people have pain, really bad pain. I'm one of them with my neck. Uh, it's an ongoing thing, and I will never be rid of it because, you know, my my neck has. There is now calcification. There's a, and I can't have it operated because I don't want to end up in a wheelchair. So uh, any back operation. I mean, I've had two cases now, again, where I warned them beforehand. I said, don't have lower back pain. Oh, the discs have degenerated and we have to fuse them and blah, blah, blah. And I told them, I said, please don't. Try to do other things. I will help you find things what I don't know. I have a vast knowledge of light therapy and homeopathy. Is My whole life has been always finding alternative ways to um, conventional medicine. So I told them, I said, please don't. Don't be up. Well, no, no. So 
goes and has the operation. A month later, I said, well, how, how is your back? Oh, it's fine. It's great. It's fabulous. I said, whoopee for you. You didn't listen to me. Good thing. I'm so glad that you're better. Yeah. Now it's a year and a half later. The man is in such dire pain that he had to have an epidural. Jeez. He is so much in pain. It's unbelievable. On all of the medication he has been, pharmaceuticals medication that he's been taking, he has now an aneurysm in his stomach. Mm. You know, it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. It really does. It's just, it makes me so upset. I could just jump up and down like I on my ball. I'm sitting on a ball, you know, because it keeps my spine straight. Yep. So, <laughs> because I have to balance on it. Uh, but it makes me so upset, you know. They are just not, not. And uh, it's, it's sad. It's really sad. Sad, sad, sad. So, any questions uh, out there? No, no questions, but... Nobody uh, else. Kathy's Nobody saying, else. I'm sure I'm not... Uh, no, she, uh, oh, where is it? Oh, where, oh, here. Sometimes I'm just trying to absorb all your valuable information, and I don't have time to think of questions. I said I'm sure I'm <laughs> not alone. <laughs> she said I'm sure I'm not alone in this, right, listeners? And she said, and I told, I told her, I said, if they're not logged in here, they can't read what you're putting. So she said, remind them. So That's if you right. are listening, and I know there is a lot of you out there listening right now, you're not logged yeah. into the chat. It doesn't take much. Just put no. any handle in there and log in. That's right. And you know what? The show is growing so nicely. Every week we have hundreds more people that are listening. So I know people like this show. Yeah. And please do tell your friends that you have. And, you know, have a pencil and paper there. When you listen to the show, have a pencil and paper there. Write down your ad, you know, your question. Or write down some of the suggestions that I make. Because... After the show, you know, it's sort of like, what did she say? What was that? So just write it down. Make little notes. You know, it's always good to do that. But they can always go and listen to the show again to know exactly Absolutely. what you said. Absolutely. You can listen to the show many times, and it will it will also. The, all the shows are saved and, you know, podcasted there. They, they are just staying there, and you can go to any show and listen to it and see what pearls of wisdom I have given you. Yep. Now, we're coming closer to the end of the show, and I do want to say something about Christmas and Hanukkah and about this season. This season... And it's another one of those things that disturbs me a little. It has become such a commercial season that it's almost sickening. It's all about what to give on presents, on, on material stuff. It is about giving. And think about this. Give friendship, give love, give support, give caring. Those do not cost anything, nothing, except you being there and giving it. If you have somebody in your area that you know is elderly, especially the elderly. I mean, our whole world is about the young and about the kids. And not that I'm, I'm, I have a problem with that. I think they do need help and they do need, we do need to help each other. But 
do you know who needs the most help people that are old and their friends have been dying for years now they're sitting by themselves they have the radio well not so much the radio but they have television and maybe sometimes they have the computer their children are often so far away that they don't see them like my child, my son and my family they're in california i mean the tickets are so high that i can't afford to have them uh, come here and i can't leave my husband for a week or two because you know he's been having health problems although he feels so much better thank you but you know i don't want to leave him for a week or two so it's it's not that so if i would be here by myself now maybe not me because i would go out there and i would beat the bushes and tell all my friends you got you got you got to take care of me because i took care of you for many years before but then there are so many others that are old and that are really not not in good shape and they die much faster if they don't socialize and if there is not so i i really urge all of you to seek at least one person this season at least one person that you can give a helping hand that means you can go go and write them a nice christmas card and say please call on me even if you don't know them please call on me i would be glad to do something for you it is the season that we should be kind to each other and it is the same with hanukkah it is the same with christmas it does not matter we should be kind and gentle to each other and especially with this new new all this upheaval that is coming for for the next year try to do that and you know what happens when you do that all of a sudden your face is smiling it is so much nicer to give something like that than to buy something my girlfriend was here last evening we always have like once or twice a month we have a sauna day we both hop into my sauna and we giggle and laugh and we have a good time and before she left i gave her one of these jars i had made the jar for her and she tasted it and she was so happy she said you know that is just the ticket because i've been been having these little problems you know be, you know little little on the chest and you know i haven't been feeling so well it's it's a season i said well you take take that in milk or in almond milk or son at night and you'll feel much better she called me this morning she said i slept like a bear i feel great so there you go you know it didn't take me much it was an empty glass i had the turmeric powder is cheap especially if you buy it in an indian or in a chinese uh um grocery store if you have one of those don't buy it at uh, whole foods you pay a fortune for turmeric powder in a little glass don't do that um uh, buy it in a in a indian or chinese grocery store much much cheaper you get a whole big bucket full for like 5 or 6 dollars so um do that this this christmas and you will see of how rewarding that is for you so was that today is the third advent and i'm lighting another candle on my wreath we have four candles on a wreath the menorah is how many eight six candles or eight no there are nine but there are eight nine eight days but there's one that eight. services them so it's the ninth so tell us what the, what is the what is the significant of the menorah that's the the miracle of hanukkah is when they needed oil for the menorah and they went and looked and looked and they couldn't find it and they then they found one little thing that maybe would be enough for one night 
So they used it, but miraculously, it lasted for eight nights. Ha! So that's why the menorah is being lit every night for eight days. How nice. How nice. Miracles do happen all, still, every day. Every day, miracles still happen. And it's nice to have these traditions. And it gives you a sense of anticipation of what is coming. Right. For the big day. Yes. And that is what, what Christmas is all about. You know, Christmas is not about uh, buying the next uh, most expensive gift and getting yourself into hawk uh, on your credit cards. So with that note, my dears, if we don't have any comments anymore? No. Nope. Well, friends, we are waiting for three to six inches uh, or maybe eight inches of snow today. So I am tugged in. And uh, I hope that you have a wonderful, healthy week. And please tell your friends, next Sunday, 12 o'clock, The Gisela Show. I will be here. I hope you do too. Bye for now. You're tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.